Good morning, everyone. Um, how are we all feeling after last night's semi-final one? <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you're a subscriber, you will know that I was in the stadium last night, um, which was an amazing experience. It was my... I broke my Eurovision virginity. I've never been to Eurovision before, so um, it was amazing. Um, but this week is going to be exhausting. Um, Travelling to and fro from Milan to Turin is going to be tough going. Anyway, I got my coffee. Right, let's talk about last night. So, um, last night was amazing. Um, just to be there and just to kind of soak in all that energy. is just it's yeah it's uncomparable um so if we just go through the qualifiers so the first one announced was switzerland marius bear now i did my prediction video um and it transpires that i predicted eight out of ten um this video is not a video where i will be like i told you so that's not really my style um but um I had said for a while Marius was qualifying. <laughs> um, and on a serious note, I, on the train from Turin to Milan, which is 50 minutes, by the way, which isn't too bad, um, I was checking on Twitter and it would seem that a lot of the people disappointed by the results last night seems seem to have found their way to Marius Bear's Twitter account and felt the need to voice their concerns on his Twitter account. Um, get a life. <laughs> Like, if you want to do something really positive today, and you even if you don't like Marius Bear's song, but you're just a decent human being, go to his Twitter account, if you have Twitter, and just post something nice. Also, don't do what a lot of people be like, I don't like your song, but well done. <laughs> just say, well done, mate. Like, at the end of the day, I thought the song was great. Um, I've always liked the song, and I think the staging's everything. Um, and yeah, I thought it deserved to qualify. Armenia, oh bless her. When she went to rip that hole, um, she missed it, didn't she? And I saw it on the screen. So when I was live, when I was in the stadium, I was looking down at the stage, but we also had the screen right in front of us that you that gets transmitted home, what you get to see. And I had to remember what my mum tells me when I go to like concerts and stuff. She's like, you've not paid this ticket to watch the screen, watch the performance. <laughs> So like now and again, I'd just be watching the screen, but I know I need to watch the stage. Um, but I could see obviously on the screen what you guys saw, she missed it slightly. And I saw the press conference where she said, yeah, I did miss it. <laughs> but luckily she kind of came through. Um, this was my favorite song in semi-final one. Had this not qualified, I would have been very upset. Um, she's drawn first half, hasn't she? Um, I know there's a lot of Spanish fans eagerly awaiting the draw for the final. I think a lot of Spanish fans are worried Chanel is going to be opening. I think Armini would be a good opener with that staging. Because it's my favourite song, it was slightly disheartening. Where I was sat, I didn't really get to see her a lot because actually the walls of the bedroom did block my view for a lot of it. So I was there being like, well, I have to watch the screen because I can't bloody see Rosaline. Which is ironic because he was it's my favourite song in the semi-final. Um, much deserved. Yeah, so well done. Um, happy. I predicted both of those. Iceland I predicted. Um, I'm kind of a little bit done with social media outing Switzerland and Iceland taking up two spaces. I think that's rubbish. I'd kind of said to you guys after watching... Um, the dress rehearsal one and the jury show there was something about Iceland when I did my prediction it wasn't what I wanted it was just based on the feelings that I had watching all of the songs I just felt Iceland had it um, and it transpires they did um, so I'm super super happy about Iceland so funny so I was with my friend it, it, it was it was great so I just happened to meet up with my friend outside the stadium um, who's from the UK I hadn't seen him for like two or three years um, and I had two tickets I said to my friend do you want to just sit with me even though his seat was better so I'm not on my own so I'm not doing my Eurovision virginity or breaking my Eurovision virginity alone he was like sure so he's British but he'd been all day with the um, Icelandic Eurofan OJ group so he had lots of Icelandic flags so I I just took one so throughout the whole performance I was doing this with this Icelandic flag such a great community in there like you're surrounded by like everyone's proud 
to represent their country in the crowd. So everyone's wearing their kind of colours of their flags and stuff. Um, and then when Iceland qualified, everyone around us was like, well done, guys, well done. And I looked around, I was like, screw it, I'm going to pretend to be Icelandic. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was like, Icelandic for the evening. Um, yeah, really happy for that. Lithuania, like, super happy for Monica. You could see in that um, uh, press conference afterwards how excited she was. I didn't have this down to qualify. I was slightly worried about the staging. Even from the dress rehearsals, they still seem to have made some differences from what I could see on the screen, which is quite interesting. I didn't think they'd be able to make much kind of difference in regards to camera angles from the dress rehearsal to the show, but they did. Um, we always knew that the song was quality. We always knew Monica would perform the hell out of it. I was just a bit worried it was too early on when you had Albania and its energy, Latvia and its energy, then you get to Lithuania. I was just worried that it would be a bit forgetful. What these 10 songs that qualified makes me think, this is the year where I think credible songs win or kind of credible songs evidently are doing okay. Switzerland, Lithuania, Portugal, um, Iceland makes me think or makes me worry for semi-vital too with the likes of Romania and Israel. Like, are the kind of bops gonna just fall by the wayside this year? We'll see. Um, anyway, love Monica um, and like the song and really happy it's through. Well deserved. Um, Portugal, oh my gosh. It was just so beautiful in that stadium. Although I will say, I did feel a bit lectured too. It was the only one whereby we didn't actually get to see what you guys see on the screens. All we got was these flashing, turn on your torchlights. <laughs> like every five seconds it would flash turn on your torchlight. It's like, okay, it's on. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, it's beautiful. Um, I love this song. I love Mauro. Amazing. Totally deserves to qualify. Norway was a no-brainer, right? Um, um, and Norway was always going to qualify without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and then Greece, oh, there was this bit like buffoon behind me who I understand what it means to be a passionate Eurovision fan and the bloody buffoon, I've heard, someone messaged me and I was like, it was the guy behind me. I don't know if you heard in her performance, someone shout something. It was the bloody dude behind me. He kept shouting, Amanda. And then, and I thought this when I watched the dress rehearsals, in that first bit where there's no music, you could hear in the dress rehearsals, if people shouted, you could hear it. And I was like, oh, I wonder if they'll kind of do that silence so that they do that crowd silence. And they evidently didn't. The dude behind me evidently felt that he wasn't loud enough. Um, and as a result of that, did one loud, Amanda. And I was like, that's the worst thing you can do. If that's your girl and that's your country, what are you doing? Um, anyway, that annoyed the hell out of me. I, I still think Greece has won the semi-final, by the way. The staging is everything. And last night, she was incredible. Uh, Ukraine, um, I mean, a no-brainer. They've drawn the first half, right? Um, and a lot of people saying this potentially might open the show. Um, that would make sense. And I think it would calm some Spanish Eurovision fans down if it does. Um, it was great last night. Honestly, it was so, we're not allowed to stand up, but in the end you just do in the stadium. The tickets at the front, which were so expensive, were labeled standing tickets but like they are strictly only allowed to sit down. I'd be so annoyed if I was paying all that money. Um, but we kind of, as long as the people behind you are standing up, I feel social decency, you can stand up. But obviously if the people behind you are sitting down. So I did kept, look, kept looking behind me. Luckily the Greek guy was just sort of obviously living his best life and standing up. So I was blessed there. Um, but it was for Ukraine, everyone stood up as they were coming on to stage. It's really interesting, on the stage, like, I'm quite a nervous person, so I could never do Eurovision, I could never be a performer, but on the stage, they've got the countdowns, being like, it starts from 30 seconds, 29, so you can see as a performer, it counting down on the stage. I'd just be on stage, be like, nah, I can't do this, <laughs> that's too much. Um, but everyone stood up and applauded, and then at the end, it's quite interesting actually, 
when the acts finish, they don't have their moment to soak up the atmosphere. There is some guy who's pushy as that runs onto stage and effectively pushes them off the stage <laughs> every performer. Um, but with Ukraine, the dude knew better and he kind of was on the side being like, guys, can you go? <laughs> he knew not to push them. Because <laughs> at the end of Ukraine, obviously the whole stadium um, just showed it was a moment where we, I think solidarity, right? Through your actions in that stadium at that time, solidarity with Ukraine. <laughs> Moldova, the ninth one qualifying. Um, so I didn't have, I didn't have Lithuania and I didn't have Moldova. I had Latvia and Albania. Um, Moldova killed Latvia. Um, and actually, I'll be honest with you, in that stadium, Moldova had a bigger reception than Norway. Moldova had the biggest reception. And they've drawn second half. I think had they drawn first half, they probably would have opened the show. Um, well deserved. Um, and then Steen, the Netherlands, that was touch and go. I was surrounded by Dutch people <laughs> in front of me. There was just a whole row of orange. And I whispered to my friend Jamie, I was like, I don't, th what if this doesn't qualify? We're going to be surrounded by a lot of disappointed people. And um, annoyingly, I'm going to be honest with you, I went to get a drink <laughs> for Bulgaria, <laughs> but the queue was so unbelievably so slow. I missed steam. I missed it. I will see it in the final this weekend. I'm going to the family show on the Saturday in the day. Um, but I said to Jamie, I was like, was it good? He was like, oh my God, yeah. And in fact, actually behind us, there was Brits, Germans, and the Greek guy. And they all said at the end, as we were walking out, that they think Netherlands won the jury and won the, the semi-final. There evidently was a feeling in the, in the stadium, but we were surrounded by a lot of Dutch people that might have impacted. And as I was leaving, I saw Vins. Um, so Vin's from Eurovision T, uh, he was there and you could see he'd obviously gone through an emotional roller coaster. I took a picture with him and he was shaking. I was like, oh my God, just calm down, you girls. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> um, but that was drama. And I think obviously the Eurovision people know what's happening in the back. People knew obviously that there was talk about Netherlands being a shock non-qualifier and that's why they, let, they left them last right but how exciting though for a viewer for Switzerland and Iceland to be like the first three to be announced and and as a result you know that you're gonna be in for a kind of shocking results <sighs> okay so non-qualifiers I mean Slovenia I mean they did a great show and they they made Slovenia proud um, but no surprises there Latvia um, like I said Moldova killed Latvia Denmark really enjoyed them yesterday. They went down really well in the crowd, but I mean, throughout this whole Eurovision season, no one's really kind of thought that had a chance of qualifying, regrettably, because I love that song. Croatia, there were some Croats <laughs> over there, like a whole band of them. Um, and yeah, the girl did good yesterday. I still think had I been in charge of that delegation, I wouldn't have chosen that staging. Um, Bulgaria, I thought there was a kind of universe where Bulgaria might qualify. Um, but I missed it. <laughs> that was my drink break, <laughs> which ran over into Netherlands. Um, and then obviously Austria and Albania. Look, um, Austria, is anyone surprised? Um, and it's got nothing to do with the vocals. I, when I watched the dress rehearsal during the day, it came on, I was like, yes. But then when you get to Norway, I think you just forget Austria a little bit. I just think it was a big miss opportunity not bringing the dancers from the music video to do something else with that staging. Um, I don't know if Austria could have done anything more other than the dancers. I just think probably the jury's killed it, um, in all honesty. Um, because there was a lot of lo love for Austria around us. And it's so nice when you leave the stadium, obviously everyone's wearing their flags. You basically, even though you don't know people, you're like, well done. Or you're like, oh, unlucky. And as we were leaving out, there was two guys with Vote for Austria t-shirts. And me and my friend went over and be like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> and then Albania. I think when things calm down a little bit, um, I will touch base with you guys again. I've got a lot of stuff about Albania that I've not been allowed to say. 
based on my time in Madrid, based on some conversations that I had with Manella, based on some of my conversations with the delegation, and then putting that together with what she has said in an interview, I had already worked out that that staging wasn't going to be good. And you can sit there and say that that staging was good and she was robbed. I'm a positive guy. I love this song. I love Secret. I, I, I'm gutted Renella's not in the final. I, I, I love Renella and the kind of diva attitude that she's brought to Eurovision. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, the staging was not good. It's got nothing to do with camera angles. It's the concept. And she said on Twitter yesterday, she, she was like, if I qualified, I know I would have been last. Yeah, you probably would have been. You can compare what she's delivering to, and compare that to what I've seen from Spain. And some of those bops are going to qualify in the semi, in semi-final too, whether it be Israel or Romania or Ireland. You know, the staging, the concept, the production of the staging doesn't hold up, which is kind of weird because Albania last year, didn't they have Sasha? Um, I, they had a, a top producer last year, Albania. I, Renella seemed to have gone down a route where she wanted to do this herself. And I'm just saying, if you want to kind of kick off about Switzerland, Lise back Marius Bear knew to give it to someone else. He's the songwriter, he's the singer, he's not the stage producer. That's all I'll say. When things calm down, I'll come back to you about some stuff I know <laughs> about this staging. Um, but of course I'm gutted for Ronella. of course I'm gutted for Albanians, of course I'm gutted for a Eurovision fan that's not going to see this song in the final, obviously. Yeah, those are my thoughts. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. And if you've made it to the end of this video and you've not subscribed, please do subscribe. Please do click the notification button so you're informed even when I post videos. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.